If you can avoid making these simple editing mistakes in CapCut, you're gonna honestly be better than 99% of other beginner editors. And you know what that means, finding success in your videos, which is gonna help you stay motivated to just keep going. And trust me, you're gonna wanna keep going. Also, this video applies to both long form videos like you're seeing now and short form videos. Let's dive into it. You need to stop doing this. It is an amateur and beginner way to blend your music and honestly, there's a better way to do it. Let me show you. Find the point that you wanna end the first song. I wanna end my first song at this point, so I'm gonna cut the back half of that song up until this point. Now, let's go ahead and drag our second song closer and zoom in to our timeline. On my first song, I'm gonna go ahead and click it, go to my auto mark beats and select beat two. This is gonna show me where all the prominent beats in that song are. The first step is to match the beat points of your songs. So I can see that there's a prominent beat in my second song right there. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that top portion of the song just to where that beat starts. And let's go ahead and line up those beat points. The next step is to add a riser leading up to that beat point. I'm gonna go ahead and use riser five for my ultimate full making pack. Go ahead and zoom into your timeline again and make sure that that riser matches up with those beats. That sounds great. And the next thing we're gonna do is add a whoosh. And there's one more step to making this audio transition super professional. On your first audio track, find a couple seconds before we transition into our second audio track. I'm gonna cut where he says man, so I can go to this marker, select on my music track and hit command B. This gives us a portion right here. I'm then gonna drag this portion down and drag a couple of frames onto the top just like that, and add a bit of a crossfade. Now click on this cut portion of your first audio track, go to Voice Changer, and there's two effects that I found work absolutely best for this. Number one is echoey. And the second one is the Archibald filter. Choosing between echoey and Archibald is really just dependent on the song. Some songs work better with echoey and some songs work better with Archibald. I think for this case, Archibald is the option. Now, we've gone from this to this. <laughs> As you know, music is such an important part of making great edits. So being able to transition between one music track to another professionally is such a key part. Number two, unanimously, what is one thing that all the great YouTubers do? You're not gonna find a modern YouTube video without this done correctly. And therefore, it is so important. That's leveling your sound correctly. I chatted to an editor who said as soon as they swipe across a video and the sound isn't leveled correctly or it's too low, they swipe away. So we wanna keep people on our videos and therefore let's do this correctly. CapCut makes it so easy. You have your video on your timeline and you can see that there's waveforms at the bottom of this video. This indicates that there's sound coming from this video. Under your preview window, you'll see these two lines. Go ahead and click that and when we play our video, you're gonna see that it's showing us how loud or soft that video is. I can tell that this is too soft because my line is going between minus 12 and minus 20. What you're gonna do is go ahead and hit on CapCut and go to settings, go to edit, and then where it says target loudness, go ahead and set this to YouTube. And that is minus 14 LUFS, go ahead and click save. Now when I click on my video, I can go to the audio tab and I can say normalize loudness. This is then gonna normalize that loudness and you can see on our timeline that the video is much louder. Watch what happens when I play this. Great for building tension, wishes for things like camera. Our waveforms are sitting now between minus zero and minus six. Now, personally, I think that is a little bit too loud. So what I go ahead and do to make this more professional is I go to my volume slider and I turn this down to minus two. Building tension, wishes for things like camera. You can see we're not quite getting up to that zero point, which is perfect for YouTube. On YouTube, you wanna be sitting between minus six and minus 12. Obviously that's gonna jump a little bit, but if most of your video is between minus six and minus 12, you're in a great spot. On the topic of sound leveling correctly and making great videos, I've put together a full CapCut course called CapCut Lab. It's 28 modules, over seven hours of video content, and teaches you everything from sound leveling to how to edit correctly, to how to use CapCut, to even things like storytelling. So if you're interested in learning quickly how to use CapCut and how to edit better, check out CapCut Lab. It's the first link in the description. Part of editing a great video is having great sound. Now you'll know from CapCut Lab that sound is 50% of the viewer experience. 
but we can't always guarantee that our sound is gonna be great. Let me show you an audio recording I did. So sometimes when you record audio, there's gonna be a ton of background interferences. You get the point. We're not always gonna have crispy audio. So how do we get that audio sounding crispy? All right, go ahead and click on your audio, go to basic and select isolate voice. I find isolate voice to be absolutely incredible at isolating just your voice and removing a lot of those background sounds. Check this out. When you record audio, there's gonna be a ton of background interference. City noise, cars, construction, wind, etc. I'm actually audible now, which is incredible considering how bad the original audio was. Now there's another tool that works incredibly well called Adobe Podcast. This cleans up your audio, it's completely free, and all you have to do is go to podcast.adobe.com, go to enhance speech, and drag and drop that audio file that isn't clean. It'll process your audio, you download it, and then sync it back up into CapCut. It's another great way to clean up your audio, and sometimes it actually performs a little bit better than CapCut. Other times, CapCut triumphs and performs better. So we've touched on a lot of audio because, again, audio is just so important, but what about the actual visuals? There's one thing that happens, and when I see it in edits, I absolutely know that this person is a beginner editor. Please don't do this. You're gonna be better than the beginner editors. Okay, let's say you wanna zoom in to your clip for a bit of dynamism. I see a lot of beginner editors going to their transform, adding a keyframe, moving a couple keyframes ahead, adding another keyframe, and obviously increasing your scale. Now, when you play between these two keyframes, you do have the zoom in, but it's a linear movement. Now life and reality is not linear, it's dynamic and there's acceleration and deceleration. How we do this is go ahead and click on your clip, right click and say show variable speed animation. Now you'll see on the scale tab that we have this diagonal line indicating that there's change because we zoomed in. You can see that that line is also perfectly straight showing that it's a linear movement. Go ahead and select those two keyframes, zoom out a little bit until you can see this graph icon Go ahead and click that and you can select ease. Now you'll see that this line is curved, indicating that we have acceleration design at specific moments and deceleration. That's looking so much better just with a couple clicks. Now I really love quad ease. I feel like it exaggerates that acceleration and deceleration. And to get a little bit more technical, go ahead and click on those keyframes and drag the second one closer to the first one. Now watch what happens. Place creative sound design at specific moments. We have a foster head. point of acceleration and a slower point of deceleration, leading to a very, very smooth scale in. So that's a great way to level up your edits and not be a beginner. This next beginner mistake that I see all the time is using the worst font and terrible animations on your captions or subtitles. Now, why is this important? because 40% of people watch short form videos with their sound off. So captions are not only a great accessibility tool, but they also help someone who's watching with their sound off to stay engaged and understand what the video is about. How do we fix this? The first one is font. Now there are a ton of beautiful, minimal, sleek fonts that you can use. Fonts like Inter, Visby, Arial, Times New Roman, and if you wanna be a bit fancy, Tempos. All of these fonts I've used on my channel. Now the second one is animations. I think we all know by now that if you go to text, auto captions and select generate, CapCut is gonna generate auto captions for you. Once those captions are generated, you are automatically selected on the system font. Go ahead to your font selection, toggle that up and you can scroll down to all the fonts that you've installed on your actual computer. Let's go ahead and change this to enter semi bold. Now what's great about captions is you can also go to animation, go to captions, and see a plethora of different captions that you can use. I've gone ahead and favorited some of the beautiful, minimal, professional looking captions animations. Number one is fade in. Absolutely beautiful. Number two is fade to. Super clean. Number three is multi-line. And number four to spice it up a little bit is multi-line combo. Now for this, you may need to change the position of your captions and let's see how that looks. To me, that looks absolutely beautiful. So instead of using the crazy animations with different fonts and colors and highlighting and bouncing, which can honestly just be irritating, I like to use a clean, professional looking animation. On the topic of captions, this next mistake is simply spelling mistakes. Now this is so easy to mitigate in CapCut. Go ahead and select one of your captions and go to the captions tab. I could go ahead and select this find and replace option 
type the incorrect spelling of the word and replace this with risers. I know this isn't how you actually spell it, but for the sake of the example, let me show you. Once you hit replace all, you can now see that risers is replaced with the new spelling of the word risers. The next mistake is misaligned eye lines when doing a jump cut like you've just seen. Jump cuts are essential to create some movement, some dynamism, and to cut out pauses and mistakes that you make. But when you do misaligned eye line, which is what you're seeing right now, it can lead to some frustration in the viewing experience. Now, how do we fix this? CapCut recently implemented a new feature called Guides and Rulers. You can select these three lines, go to Guides and Rulers, and add a horizontal and vertical guide. What's great as well is we can shift these guides up and down. When someone is watching your video, most of the time they're gonna be looking in your eyes. So you wanna keep the position of the eyes the same. I therefore drag my horizontal guide up to my eyes and I drag my vertical guide right in between my eyes. Now when I do my jump cut and I zoom in my clip, you can see that our eye position has shifted. I'm gonna go ahead and drag myself down so that when we look between our two clips, that eye position stays exactly the same. Now our jump cut looks super, super smooth because again, that eye line has stayed the same. This next beginner mistake, and I'm sure you've seen it and maybe even experienced it, is a single black frame at the end of your export. When someone is watching your video on loop, having that black frame there leads to a jarring cut. And we're all about consistency and ease of watching. So how we guarantee that we don't have a black frame at the end of our video is I go to the very beginning of my timeline and I select I. You can see CapCut says select endpoint. I then go to the very end of my timeline. I go one frame back on my timeline using my arrow key and I select O. This selects the out point. Your in and out point essentially tell CapCut the exact points that you wanna export. By selecting an out point that has video, we are guaranteeing that this last frame can't be a black frame. Now this next mistake specifically applies for short form content ignoring safe margins. Let me show you what CapCut implemented, which is insanely cool. By going to the view tab, I can select vertical, which is gonna put our video on the side here. Once we are in the vertical layout, CapCut adds a social media preview where I can go ahead and select TikTok. And this is gonna show me all the safe margins for where those icons are. And this last one is using titles that are either too big or too small. Now, titling and motion graphics is an art of itself. <laughs> Check out CapCut Lab. It'll teach you a ton about that. But the general rule of thumb is to make use of areas on your screen to inform how big or small your titles are. Let me show you what I mean. When we add a default title, you can see this title is way too big for this portion of the screen that I wanna put it in. Therefore, I would decrease its size and place it in this open gap. This looks so much better than what we just saw. If I wanted to place this title on the center screen, I would decrease its size a little bit to frame it within myself. That looks so much better. If I wanted it on the right of screen, I could place it somewhere there and increase its size slightly to fit evenly between the side of my face and the side of the screen. The general rule of thumb here is to use the objects within your frame to naturally inform how big or small your title is. And when you do that, to try and keep the distance between the edge of the frame and your object or subject the same, like I showed you in the last example. This is just gonna make your titles look so much better, it's gonna balance out your frame, and things are overall gonna be way more professional. Avoid doing just these 10 beginner editing mistakes, and I promise your videos are gonna be so much better. Keep editing, keep grinding, it is absolutely worth it.